So first, I'm going to start with explaining how the algorithm works and what the program is doing while it's running. So first, we start off with a, a maze of an entered size, so you can have any size of maze that you prefer. And firstly, all the walls are closed off. So in every single square here, um, there's a wall on either side, so you can't move into any any other cell from that cell. And then we place a virtual robot in any square. And I've just chosen the bottom left square here. And what that virtual robot is going to do is it's going to knock down walls. And here, there's two different walls that it can knock down. And they're highlighted in orange. It can't knock down the black walls because they're on the edge of the maze. You can't knock down any of the side walls because then you'd have a hole in your maze. And obviously we don't want that. So it randomly picks one of those orange walls to remove. And it removes the top one and moves into that cell. Next, it will repeat the process. So it picks a random wall at the walls it can remove and moves into the cell that it's removed the wall from. Repeats it again, here it's free. And it will keep doing this until it can't remove any walls from This is what happens here. It's in a dead end, it can't remove the blue walls because they are going into a square that the virtual robot has already visited. So what it has to do is turn around and go back to where it last was. And now it removes a cell, it removes a wall from here. And it will keep doing this until every single wall, every single cell, sorry, has been visited. And it's obviously a lot faster than this, but this is just a demonstration. So here it's in another demonstration. Can't remove any of the walls from there. So it'll keep going back until remove another wall. Can remove a wall here and now it's visited every single cell in that maze. So now you have a complete maze. And this is a flowchart of the algorithm I used and it is known as recursive backtracker which uses um, something called a depth first search. So this is just to show you how I stored the maze. So each square has a four digit binary value associated with it and that correlates to the walls around it. So if there's a wall, there's a 1, and if there isn't, there's a 0. So, say for example, this here, it's got walls all around it, so it's 1, 1, 1, which is the equivalent of 15 in decimal. This one here, no wall here, a wall there, a wall there, a wall there, so that's 0, 1, 1, 1 which is equivalent of 7. And another example, this one here, we've got a wall here, 1, 1, 1, 0, so it's 14. And each of those values for the square 
is stored in a 2D list or 2D array. So each row is a list by itself. And the 2D array or 2D list is a list of the rows, a list of a list of the rows. So basically all of these are here, all of these are here, all of these are here, and all of these are here. And this is how the program would first generate a 2D list. So all of the walls everything is one. And then from that, as we saw earlier, it knocks down walls. So here we've got the zeros. And to us, that doesn't mean that much. But to the computer, um, it allows it to understand what the maze is, um, its dimensions, what the, where the walls are, and potentially for a maze solving algorithm, how to solve the maze. But to us, all of those ones and zeros mean absolutely nothing. So we need a way to draw the output. And um, I was lazy and chose what I thought was the easiest method, something I knew how to use, which was the Python turtle. So the way I printed the maze is firstly, the turtle does the top right hand walls. So the top wall and the right wall. And then it looks, starts to look at each cell. And firstly it starts here and grows across and prints the bottom wall by looking at the first value in each four digit binary value. So on the bottom one it's always going to be 1111. So the turtle prints a solid wall. And then it goes to the next row and prints the bottom row of that. So it's zero here, so it's pen up there. It doesn't print anything there, but here it's one, so it prints a wall here. And then these are zero, so it goes all the way up to there. These are ones, all these three, so it prints a wall there. And it goes to the next one and prints one there, because that's a one. And then it does the same thing for the upwards um, walls. So it starts on the left. All of these are going to be 1. We obviously look at the bottom, sorry, the rightmost value here, because this is this side. So all of them are 1. It prints 1 there. And it goes on to the next one. 1 here and 1 there. So it's constantly going pen up, pen down, relating on whether there's zeros or ones. And that's a finished maze now. There are no walls to be printed here because that was zero. So this is the code I wrote for the maze generation algorithm. And I used functions. And this is the main program here. So you set the parameters. Um, currently they're on 5, but I can change that to anything I want. And it outputs this 3D array, 3D array or list walls from the maze generate function. And what this does, it sets the variables first. So walls um, is what you saw earlier, that array with all the ones. And it starts x equals 0, y equals 0 because um, that's the bottom left corner, x is increasing on the right, y is increasing up. Visit sum equals zero, um, that's basically um, a sum of the visited array, which is this one here, um, and that just keeps a track of if a cell has been visited. So if you've visited it, um, it goes to one, so obviously when you finished, you finished um, creating the maze and you visited every single cell, every single one of that will be 1. So the sum of that um, to the array will be size x times size y. And that is how I know if I finished using this. 
And we also have visit n, another 2D array, which just keeps track of the coordinates of the squares we've been in. So each time um, you go to a new square, it adds it on. And there's sort of a stack um, of squares that have previously been to. So this is how I work out what walls can be removed. So firstly, I start with no walls can be removed. Zero is you can't remove that wall. One is you can remove that wall. And that's the same as what we had earlier with the one, two, four, and eight. It's sort of a one here, two here, four, eight. So if we look at the left, we can't remove a wall that's been visited on the left. And we can't remove a wall if it's on the left side. So the x not equals zero checks if it's on the side of a maze. And this here checks if it's if the um, if one to the x on the left has been visited, and that's done for left, up, right, and below. And this here is just to say if there's n if there's no way we can go, just go back to the last one. So the last one in the stack, visit n n minus one, and n is just. Um, how to keep track of where we are in visit n. And current node is the current um, place we are. Um, and current node is just the coordinates as a 2D array. So as, a, as an array with two items, x and y. So if there are rules, if there are um, a wall that we can remove it picks it randomly so it just keeps picking um, a random point in the options array until it is one and then if it's one this is the procedures we do to remove um, the wall and move into the next one and there's a separate one for up right below and left and then this is just moving on to the next one. So n increases by 1 because we've inserted the new um, node onto the visit n stack. And current node equals opposite node. That's just moving on to the next one. And we make sure that we've said we visited it by making it 1. And these are the new x, y values. And at the end, we just calculate um, the sum of visit again, just to see if we visited every single thing. And then it returns walls once it's finished. And this is the print maze function, which is the function or procedure that prints the maze. Um, it's just a lot of variables here, just stating how the turtle works and sort of the grid size of the turtles so it knows where it is and where to start and how far to go for each for each point because that relates to the size of the maze we want to make um yeah so firstly it does the top one and the right side wall and this is what it's doing here and then it starts doing the walls on the bottom. So it's doing the bottom wall of each cell here. It's just checking whether it's one. If it is, pen down. If it's not, pen up. And it repeats that for all the rows for y in range size x. For x in range size y. And then it does it again for upwards, which is basically the same thing, just it's now looking at the first one in each um, byte, sorry, uh, four bit. And that's it. So if we run that now, it should create a maze of size 10. So I've slowed down the turtle so you can see what's happening. Um, usually it'd be much faster, but this is just so you can catch a glimpse of what the turtle does.
and this can be easily scaled up to quite large mazes. Um, we could go up to 50, but then it st starts to take a long time to print using the turtle. And um, there's a few disadvantages to using this recursive backtracker algorithm. Um, one of the problems is the dead ends aren't very large. So let's say for this maze, here we've got, we're going from the start here, say the bottom left, and here we have a dead end. And it's not that large, so it results in quite an easy maze. Um, to make it a harder maze with larger dead ends, stuff that's dead ends that go on for quite quite long, um, you'd have to use a more complex algorithm. So this is just an easy algorithm to implement. So here is um, a maze I created earlier, and this one's a 50 by 50, and it just demonstrates the ability for this um, program to be upscaled. Um, and here's a 100 by 100, and that took a long time to print. So maybe it might be a good idea to consider a more efficient printing method in the future without using the turtle. So the plan for this is potentially in a video forthcoming to develop some maze solving algorithms to solve these mazes. So I'd love it if you'd leave a like and subscribe and thank you for watching.